Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we have not just one, but two game engine releases, so check out for that other video as well. The first one we're talking about today is Babylon JS. Now this was released, oddly enough, over the Easter weekend, and then following Easter weekend we had April Fool's Day, the one day of year I just do not go on the internet. So this is coming to you a little bit late, uh, and it's Babylon JS. Babylon JS is an excellent web game engine. Uh, it is super powerful in terms of what it could do. This and Play Canvas are probably the two strongest 3D game engine options out there. Uh, it is backed by Microsoft, there are a number of new features. We'll, we'll actually show you those new features in action, at least three of them, and then we'll get back to the release notes about the Babylon JS 7 release. Uh, so let's start things off. So we got our first demonstration. This is the new geometry system. So think about Blender geometry nodes. It is a setup like that for creating procedural worlds. So you see over here, all these things are created out of procedural geometry. And you can see the very randomized effect of each one. Now, these are actually authored using uh, here. So you can see a geometry nodes tool. Uh, so here you're creating a box of size one. So we could come up here, we could change size out to two. And then you can immediately see a result down here. Of course, we could also change out the, uh, the primitive that we're working with. So let's make a disk instead. And we'll drop that out as our geometry there. And there is the end result of it. I don't know why it isn't showing up down here. Uh, it might be a zoom thing. Uh, but anyways, th this is how it works. It's a basically a node-based setup for creating procedural geometry. Uh, and this was added in version 7 along with this uh, geometry node editor that you could go ahead and check out. I wonder if I need to do a rebuild after I swap that out probably. Anyways, uh, I'm not sure why this change isn't showing up immediately, but it does give you an idea of the new functionality. Next up, we have this one. This is the new uh, global illumination system. You can see a sample scene in action here. By the way, you'll notice over here, obviously, this is the code driving this particular demonstration. So what we're going to do is enable global illumination. And there you see global illumination is basically uh, all of the light in your world. Uh, it supports things like secondary bounces. So when light bounces off one surface onto another, the color changes of it, the, the performance of it changes slightly and so on. And various global illumination systems actually are out to deal with that. So you can use a full RSM texture option here and you'll see immediately the result of doing that. Oops. So there you see there, you can control uh, the intensity of things. You can blur or not blur the results. Uh, but basically, yeah, you now have global illumination system built in here as well. And then we have uh, this guy right here. This is Gaussian splatting. Uh, this is kind of a photogrammetry solution. Uh, you can actually acquire these 3D scenes really, really simply uh, by just basically taking a video. Instead of the traditional photogrammetry of taking like hundreds and thousands of images of something. Uh, you can acquire a scene pretty quickly with basically just a video. I did a video on Gaussian splatting there, uh, but now Babylon 7 actually has support for rendering Gaussian splat results. Uh, the results generally aren't ready to be used in a real-time view, so the actual practicality of the Gaussian splats at this point in time in gaming uh, is a little questionable, but you could use this to acquire like a hyper-realistic detailed scan of the actual world. And now you can render these Gaussian splats directly in Babylon JS 7. And then finally, we now have Ragdoll support. Now, Ragdoll is obviously a physical simulation mechanism for uh, 3D characters. And let's what hap watch what happens to this poor fellow who is creeping slowly when we turn the Ragdoll off. <laughs> and then back on. Uh, hopefully he gets back up. No, I think it's a one and done kind of setup. But you get an idea of what ragdolls are all about. Once again, the code for handling those ragdolls are all available over here. Now, so far, we've actually just kind of hit the highlight features. Uh, so there is a bunch more to it. You can check out their release video as well. Now, interestingly enough, I don't know why, but they do their release notes on Medium instead of on their own site. I don't really understand that. Uh, but you see here, we got, again, the, the node-based geometry or the procedural geometry generation with the editor that we saw in action. As you can see, you can make, obviously, much more intense graphs uh, than what we saw. Um, and global illumination is in place now. Uh, so they introduced support for basic global illumination. Highly desired and advanced feature allows Babylon JF scenes to render even more lifelike experience by allowing light and shadows to bounce around the environment in a way much closer to matching reality. Uh, major advancement in web rendering, just like everything comes with Babylon 7, is completely free and open source. And again, we checked out the demo there, and there is documentation for this as well if you want to see how it actually works. They have the ability to render Gaussian splats. Uh, so actually the nice part is you can do it on multiple devices running at up to 60 frames per second. We do have ragdoll physics support that we saw earlier on. And again, when we turn it off, 
poor guy falls to the ground. Uh, and then we've got other improvements here and here as well. So we've got a uh, web XR. XR obviously is the amalgamation of VR and AR and mixed reality in there as well. Uh, so if you wanna work in uh, VR headsets on the web, uh, you do have that functionality and support there as well, as long as controller support, hand tracking and that kind of stuff. And then the newest thing in the MR or the XR world is obviously the new Apple Vision Pro. So if you have that $3,500 headset and you want something else to do with it, well, that is now supported on Babylon JS 7 as well. Uh, there is improvements to their animation system, exciting new features to the underlying animation engine, unlocking powerful new capabilities for real-time animations on the web. Update, add the ability to blend animation groups and mask specific portions of animations, allowing the creators to fine-tune their experiences like never before. Uh, interested in a forward walk cycle blender with a sideways strafe, all with active morph target lip sync. It's now possible because of this. So basically, it's an, an animation blending system. Uh, and then we got improvements for the GLTF support. GLTF is like the interchange format for the web for um, 3D files. Um, so uh, they've done some updates there, uh, added support for dispersion and anisotrophy GLTF extensions. And then, yeah, a couple other things is the grease line built right into the core engine. The grease line system unlocks some exciting new possibilities for web creators. Uh, this new special type of line is built using a mesh system to display lines of any specific width. Extra sprinkling of non-trademarked fantasy dust is that these lines are equipped with a special shader allows the lines to be always face the camera so they can viewed constantly no matter uh, where the camera moves. So you can see here they're used for making the uh, Star Wars hyperspace effect uh, going on there. Uh, we have advanced ground projection. Uh, so imagine taking a 360 degree skybox environment and then magically transforming the lower half into a fake ground that appears to support the 3D object in your scene. Uh, this illusion provides a perfectly smooth transition from the ground to the sky within your scene. Sounds like wizardry. What are you waiting for? Check it out. And here you can see the results. He looks like uh, he is on the ground at this point, but right now he looks like he is floating and then they toggle on ground projection and now it looks like he is on the ground. Uh, Kind of a niche feature, but I can see some uses for it. Uh, seamless texture decals or decals. So you can see the results of them in action between these two fellows right here and here. Uh, MMD support, uh, ability to import 3D assets and animations from the popular 3D creation software, Miku Miku Dance or MMD. I gotta admit, I, I don't think I've ever heard of Miku Miku Dance. So maybe I have something else I need to cover in the future. Uh, but yeah, they support for its formats now. It seems to be kind of a, an anime avatar type creator. And yeah, that's about it. So that is Babylon JS, uh, JS, Babylon JS 7 just being released. Again, a number of neat new features in that particular release. It took about a year's development to get to all of this stuff. Um, some nice new improvements here for sure. It is definitely one of the cooler 3D uh, frameworks out there when it comes to uh, web graphics. Uh, an idea of what is actually capable of there is web GPU support. I've found it a little tricky to find devices that actually support it, mind you, or particular browsers that support it. Uh, but you do have WebGL 1, 2 and WebGPU support there as well. And then tons and tons and tons of features, as you can see right here. Uh, they do have a lot of examples available as well. They integrate with most of the major tools out there. Uh, again, number of demos to showcase what it is capable of. Uh, there is corporate support behind this one. It is an open source project, so you can go ahead and check this guy out on GitHub as well. Once again, the website for the main site is babylonjs.com, and then the code itself is up on GitHub under the Apache license, which is one of the more liberal licenses out there. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen, Babylon JS 7, a nice update to a nice web-based 3D game engine out there. If you've never checked it out before, I would recommend you do so. Sorry, this one did come a couple days late. Again, I don't know why people chose to release their game engines on Easter weekend, long weekend. And again, I take April Fool's Day off every year because God, I hate that day. So let me know what you think of this engine. Let me know what you think of April Fool's Day as well. And uh, do stay tuned. There is another game engine release I'm going to be covering today as well. And I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.